Hi everyone, back again with another review and back again with another piece that I'm actually really looking forward to talking about and um, frankly showing off in a way. The Landsknecht's Emporium Antonia Saber. First things first though, as per usual, general concept of this video as with the others is I will have my talk a bit first, give my impression then we will get to a number of pictures where you just basically can look at the stats and pause, see the sword in context with other similar things. Then we have a clip of me just doing the Fafala di Ferro, so you can just see it moving about. And then lastly we have some sparring impressions, so you don't only have to take my word for it, but you know, maybe you can put uh, this one into context a bit more against other similar things. So, um, some caveats apply, as per usual. Um, as I said in the Landskin Symposium Dorothea review, this is a piece made by a company that I really like, that I've been buying from for a good while, and I like the people working at that company. I have met some of them um, on occasion, I talk to them, so... Um, Take what I say with a bit, tiny bit more, tiny larger pinch of salt, so to speak. If it sounds like I'm fawning a lot, I probably am, because not only done by a company I like, by people I like, but it's also a custom made for me, so I'm very much inclined to like this one, really. Plus, um, as with the Dorothea, I didn't get as much time into sparring with it as I would normally want to do before actually giving an impression, before doing a review. But, you know, still Corona, the hall is still closed and the outside is at the moment less rainy, but a good bit colder, which isn't fun. <laughs> so, yeah. That being said, um, we got a good session in um, and I feel quite confident in my assessment. It also means, though, that we'll probably do a follow-up review down the line just to let you know how this one behaves um, in the mid to long run. And should anything change majorly, which I don't expect, but should it happen, we'll let you know and post it into the description, basically. Okay, for the fun part. Landskrieg's Emporium Antonia. What it is, is basically just an early typish saber with a, you know, a ring to the side for protection. Um, the story of that one is that a while ago Landsknecht's Emporium had a sale where they offered a sword that they called a Landsknecht's Säbel. And I was very much inclined to buy that one because I like sabers. The problem from my perspective, not the sword, was that it was a sharp. And I just don't have that many uses for a sharp. I don't have a garden where I can do cutting tests as much as, much as I would like. And I really don't like just having swords lying around. Um, I very much prefer to have a sword that I can actually do things with. That is what they were made for. So I'm a terrible, terrible collector. Um, so I didn't get it. Uh, admittedly, I was a bit jealous when I later saw it in a video actually being used for cutting, but yeah, c'est la vie. And then the Dorothea was announced, and if you haven't watched that review, give it a look, link in the description. I didn't really take that long for ordering one, and that got the tiny cogs in my head turning, and after a while I contacted them and asked them, you know, could you do something with that blade because it's a very nice blade it has many things that i really want to have in a piece i can fence with but make a different kind of grip for it you know like that other piece you did and turns out they could and that is how that one came about now comparing it to the dorothea um, of course as you can see same blade, though done a tiny bit differently, because way less metal in the grip in the end. 
and that just uh, means some differences in the stat that translate a bit to differences in handling. I got them at the same time and of course, I mean, yeah, obviously they handle differently and just look at them. Still, because it's essentially the same blade, I was kind of surprised on how different um, they feel. And it's not only me, Ulrich actually said the same thing when he you know, picked them up the first time. So, moving hilt to blade. Different um, hilt construction, of course, less metal, as I keep saying, but also just quite a different type of grip. This one is way more rotund. This one is just generally flatter, a bit wider. Meaning, we start at a 3.9-ish, or 3.6-ish centimeter width here, and then it tapers down to 3.1 per bit of the cross. Same thing goes for the general thickness of the grip. Um, we start at 2 centimeters, roughly, at the thickest, and then we move down to 1.5-ish. So a general taper to the cross, which is nice in gripping, um, but not overly so. Um, I've had pieces in the past where the maker had the general same idea, but in my personal opinion kind of overdid it, which just wasn't really comfortable to use. Not so with this one. This one is nice. You can still feel it, but it's still overall a very comfy grip to use. I like the hook at the end because well, you can just hook into it. Should you want to use it in a more thumb kind of grip, you can also snug up on it. Generally, the open hilt construction means that you have way more leeway when it comes to the kind of gloves that you use. You have 10 centimeters in the length of it, really, but you can move down a bit, should you have to. It does have a metal cap at the end, which makes for a nice finish, and looking at my other grips in sparring is probably a good idea for just, you know, keeping some damage from it, as can always happen in sparring. Moving on from there, you have a nice cross, 20-ish centimeters about, and a nice ring for protection, which is six centimeters wide, round about. It sticks out for five centimeters, so a good part of your hand really is behind it. Um, for all the winding and binding that you do, your hand is protected quite well, really. And it's still open enough for, you know, doing the kind of grip work that you have to do for pretty much everything. Uh, one thing I do like about the grip is, I don't know if the camera shows it really well, but you do have a mid-section um, here that, um, depending on how thick your glove is, can actually function as kind of an, an index for your finger. I like to put my pinky here, just, you know, to know where it is. It's also nice for the thumb, uh, should you do that. You can't always feel it, but, you know, it's nice. And at the same time, again, it's not overdone in a way that it kind of feels uncomfortable to use it, so quite nice in that regard. Moving on to the blade, um, from there, uh, again, same blade, basically, as the Dorothea, but done a bit differently. It's a bit lighter in its general construction um, to compensate for just the lack of material in, in the grip, really. So we start at 4.3 centimeters. And then we go down to 3.9 at the very first step. It thins out towards the Yelman to 3.1-ish centimeters. And then at the thickest part of it, we get back to 3.7. And then we get to a 1.5-ish centimeters tip. And if we look at the distal taper, same base material. So we start at six millimeters here. Immediately after the step, we go down to five. Then it thins down to three, and then it gets a bit thinner than the Dorothea does. We have two millimeters, and then it gets back to six millimeters in the thickened point construction, which again I prefer to any kind of folded tip. I find it to be way more sturdy and durable overall. Generally, the overall length is comparable or Pretty much exactly the same, actually, 91-ish centimeters. It is, because of all the difference in material, though, way lighter. This one comes in at about 770 grams, whereas the Dorothea was a tiny bit above 1,100. 
but because, you know, difference in material, blade being kept a bit lighter still, um, we do have a POB that is at around 18-ish centimeters, whereas the Dorothea has that at about 10-ish. So quite a difference in general feel to it, really. If I have to compare the two, the Antonia feels way more messery, <laughs> in a way. Um, the closest equivalent that I have to it is actually, surprisingly, my old Gottfried. Those two kind of, they don't feel the same, but they feel similar in that way. And um, I quite... I quite liked it. I mean, I really like the Dorothea for what it is, but I also really like the Antonia for having that kind of more forward-weighted, messery feel to it. And um, just if, if one worry you would have by just hearing the POB that this might feel like a brick, it really doesn't, but it does have a good presence to it for, you know, getting that center line after the bind winding down mutating into a thrust or stuff like that so it's just a really nice feeling sort I have to say um, the lighter blade does in the end translate to a tiny bit more flex not that much but it is a bit more flexible than the Dorothea is um, which is nice, of course. Uh, there is one point that you can see in sparring where Ulrich actually catches me in the arm and the blade connects and bends down to what was nearly a 90 degree angle, actually. Ulrich let go after that, so um, the force could distribute and that was that. Still, um, on a stiffer blade, that could have been uncomfortable because I wasn't wearing any extra protection on the arm. I was wearing a fencing jacket, of course, but my fencing jacket is a SPES Officer Level 2. Um, no extra protection on the arm and that isn't the thickest jacket around there. But no black spot or anything. I felt it, of course, but the blade took care of that. And it sprung back evenly. There's no permanent set or anything to it. so. That is really nice. It is overall a sword that I feel very comfortable and safe in using and it's also really fun to use. I really like it. If you're looking for something that is a bit different maybe than, um, you know, a lot of sabers or dusak type -ish things that you can get on the market, um, it's a bit of a hidden menu item in that regard. Uh, it's not on their page, but you know, should you want one, you can ask them for an Antonia and they will know what you're talking about. And should you get one, please do send me a picture of yours. Because um, one thing I do like about Landskrechts Emporium is that while they do have generally um, a high level of finish in, their, in the pieces that they put out, they are still handmade, and they're all a tiny bit different. Um, for example, one piece I have, of course, is the what we call the Klein Kriegsmesser, because it is basically a you know, size-down Kriegsmesser in a way. And that was another custom that they made for me. Um, and I know of two others in existence, and they're all a tiny bit different. A bit of distant, you know, general form in the blade, tiny bit of difference in the taper to it, the cross and everything, and I really just enjoy seeing these differences. So yeah, Landsknecht's Emporium, Antonia Saber, heavy thumbs up for me, but hey, I mean, it's a custom made for me, so no surprise there. I really quite like it. Cheers.
passiert und denen dann auch nicht zu tun ist. Oder auch nicht damit sehen, ich habe eine Waschung. Fair.
Ja, ich finde die mit dem ja einfacher, den hier. Ja. 